Right, hi guys. Just a quick update on the NC700, what I've done just recently. Um, to make it into a really nice little bike now that I'm going to do lots of days away and two days away. in Probably in Great Britain. So if you stay with me on those little trips, I think you might enjoy them. Anyway, just a quick update what we've actually done on it. As you know, or may not know, we've put a little carbon fender extender. And we've done the radiator guard. The biggest thing, what we've done on this bike, that did cost quite a bit of money, is we've put an Olin shock on. Yeah, you can't see it because I've got a waterproof sock on there from R&G that keeps all the shit off because that's an expensive shock absorber and I'll take, the, take it off the bike and sell it um, if I ever sell the bike, that is. So you can't see it, I know, but it's a bright yellow Olin shock. Um, that's made this bike unbelievably better um, I just wasn't getting on with the shock every time I went over a bump it was jarring my back and you know how my back on motorbikes um, is a little bit sensitive but now it's awesome it handles better I can well I can I ro I ride actually over uh, drain covers now it's made a massive difference to this bike well worth the money uh, the other thing is uh, I've put a taller screen on uh, because, well, you need it if you're going to go for tour touring. Um, the other one was fine actually, I hadn't any trouble with that, but for touring on motorways it's just better to have that on. Um, what else have we done? Yep, we've wired up a sat nav, which is wired to the bike. It's a nice little, uh, it's all it is, is um, a sat nav from... Um, well, we had lying about in the house, basically. Uh, it was the wife's old one. It's a little tiny one, just clips off. Whoops, shit. Oops. Yeah, it's wide up, you twat. <laughs> As he drops it. Uh, it's a tiny little thing. Um, and I've made myself up a, as you can see, a special little tool there that just clips on the handlebars. I can actually use that on my other GS as well if I want to. Um, so it's, it's made up of several bits, but works really well, and it just whoops, clips on just like that and move it around. And it, it doesn't come off, and it's fantastic. Um, I'm actually really pleased with that. There we go, sort that out. There we go. Um, and yes, you're thinking, okay, it's not waterproof. But in actual fact, all I do is put it in a sandwich bag actually just take it off and put the whole thing slot it in a hand, uh, sandwich bag and just put it back on the on the mount uh, and it's totally waterproof um, and those sandwich bags are about I don't know two pound fifty for fifty of them uh, I've tried it. it it is totally waterproof better than the the proper things that are just water resistant just a little bit of light rain so you know it works really well the other thing I've done is I've put heated grips on, as you can see, the you old know, heated grips, um, which are really nice because they're really comfortable because they're a bit fatter, um, which is which is much nicer if you've got bigger hands like me. So I'm really pleased with that. There, warning for everybody out there that's going to put heated grips on this bike. I fitted five sets of heated grips in my time and this was the hardest I have ever done. Honda, in their infinite wisdom, had a big flange at the front here where you slide it on, so that's got to be ground down and filed down. Two flanges at the back. Also, there was eighth of an inch dimples all the way around the whole of this thing. It took me an hour and a half, I think, just to put this one on. It was a nightmare. Also, that one, for some reason, this is, um, was made for 22 mil bars, but for some reason, I had to file that down, and take the paint right off, and file the metal off, and use a sledgehammer to get that one on. Absolute nightmare. Don't ask me why. I've no idea. Probably why Honda does their special ones that cost about 300 quid. Um, then you've got to get someone to fit them, I expect. But, um, no, so we get in there. Um, it's turned this bike into a really pleasant little bike now with all the mods. 
especially suspension. The heated grips, so much more comfortable. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased with it now. So I'm, I'm looking forward to going away for, you know, weekends away where I don't have to cart the big GS about and whatever. I can take this into towns and it's just a lot easier to handle. Uh, but obviously I do still doing big trips and, and whatever on the other GS. Anyway, let's go because what we're going to do now, we're at the uh, reservoir here. Look, lovely, beautiful, hot day. Fantastic, but what we're going to do, we're going to go to Haybridge Basin. We're going to have a look around there. So, if you guys like to stay with me, I think you might like this little place. Okay. Oh, there's just one other little thing that we've done. We've adjusted the angle of this seat. Can you see that it's just raised up a little bit there, which you can't hold in. Drop down a bit there. Can you see? It doesn't go with the bodywork, but the who hell notices about that. But I just couldn't sit on the bloody thing for very long. Oh, it was an ass killer. My mate Malcolm, Malcolm has got the same bike. Um, I mean, he couldn't sit on for more than an hour. So, but now, go around Europe on it. Fantastic. We're at Haybridge Basin and just to remind you what a good bike this is for going going away quickly just for a few days is you can put all your luggage in there because you can see how large that is so uh, anyway let's go and have a look around Haybridge yeah I'm gonna have to apologize um, I'm afraid yes it's more boats because I do live near the coast there you go look get a cup of coffee here look and something to eat nice old canal Let's have a little look down here. There you go. It's nice here, isn't it? Lots of nice canal boats all the way along there. You can walk to Molden. Molden is over there. I don't know if you can just make it out, but it's right over there. It's about an hour's walk, I suppose, from here. Lovely day. Let's go and have a look down there. Go on, boy. Come on in. <laughs> He can't make his mind up whether to go for one ball or both balls. He's going to go for both balls. You haven't got two balls in your mouth, have you, boy? Has he? Really? I suppose he doesn't choke on them. Well done, that boy. Don't shake yourself around me. <laughs> That's a big houseboat. That's bigger than my house. That's awesome. Let's have a look in here. There's an ex Royal lifeboat. It's 
told you this was a nice spot, didn't I? Let's have a walk over the lock gates. It's the pub, the ship, or the old ship. Come and have a look round with Eric Booser. I was in that pub Sunday having lunch with Malcolm, but I didn't take the GoPro because he doesn't like filming. You know what he's like. But anyway, we've popped back here to do a little video for you guys. There we go, it's nice, isn't it? It's just uh, go and have a look up here, and then this is the seawater side. That there is an island, I think that's Ozzy Island, and I think there's one house on it, just somebody lives on that whole island, it goes from from there, right the way around to there somewhere, nice. Another little cafe place, you can have tea and cakes, yeah, quick pan round, and then we'll be off, got to get back on my bike because it's a lovely day. Catch you later. Well, we've uh, decided to have a cup of tea before we um, get back on the bike. Oh, lovely, just what I need. <laughs> and I'm um, just getting a cup of tea and I know I shouldn't but yeah look at that Norman baked me that mm, yummy 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 <laughs> 